Good morning, Goza Scope. How are you guys? Welcome to your daily Goza Scope of the day. My name is David Trigg, and I am a joy and anxiety coach helping people do three things discover their God given adventure, find grace amidst crisis, and discover who they love. So, welcome, guys. Let me know where you're listening or watching from wherever you may be welcome be sure to also uh, share this uh, goso cast with your friends this goso scope the way you do that is you just simply go from left to right on your screen and then your kind of dashboard will come up and you can share this goso scope with your friends with your followers on twitter on facebook how do you discover your purpose in life? It's pretty simple. Unfortunately, I think that all of us, myself included, struggle with this question. I'll tell you a quick story and then I'll get right into kind of uh, the meat of this gososcope. So a few years ago, I was at a prayer retreat, a silent contemplative uh, time, I think it was a weekend, where we uh, were just trying to get in, in touch with God and listening to God's voice. So at this place, it was a monastery, there were many priests, many uh, spiritual leaders, and there was this one guy who was pretty young. He was maybe in his late 20s, fresh out of seminary. I remember him riding a bicycle because as uh, one of his duties was to get the mail every day. So I remember asking him, now you want to be a spiritual leader, right? And yet here you are riding a bike, going quote into town to get the mail every day. But what was amazing is, I don't know exactly if he said anything about purpose, but I could see in his face the joy of riding his bike to get the mail. Because he understood, now here's the principle, that that was in alignment with his God-given adventure and his purpose in life, which was to be a spiritual leader. And so that's really the principle and what I wanna to give to you guys this morning, Gosa family. The way to discover your purpose in life is two things. I want to say two phrases. One is to let your life speak. And the second one is to pursue joy. So the first one is to let your life speak. What that means is that you look at what your life is telling you and you listen to that. You let your life dictate your purpose. Dictate your what is the meaning of your life or why are you on this earth. Instead, I think most of us, we do it differently. Instead of letting our life speak, we look at things out there and we say, I want that. I want this. I want to pursue. And we're, instead of letting our life speak, we are now chasing a dream. And I think that for the most part, chasing a dream is close to what I'm talking about. But I think it's not the same. Letting your life speak means that you look at what your life is telling you. Both positive or negative. Both, well, actually, whatever it's telling you, you hear it. If something, for example, that you're um, doing, let's say in, in, at work or at something that you're studying, is it kind of gives you headaches. It makes your stomach turn upside down. You want to pay attention to that and listen to that and join in and to listen to what, that, what that's saying in your life. So you want to let your life speak Hello, welcome, by the way, everybody. Andrea, nice to have you. And so when you look at what your life is saying, 
you stop chasing after what people tell you to do. And instead, you let what's going on inside of your life lead you forward. It's a whole different way of looking at purpose. Instead of chasing after a dream, you're actually just chasing what's inside of you. What your life is saying about who you are. And the way that happens is through both, po through both positive and negative experiences. Let's say you had a negative experience a year ago in relationships, in business, at work. Let your life speak and tell you, I think that's not what I'm supposed to be doing. On the, opposite, on the, on the other hand, you maybe got involved in a certain nonprofit and maybe it was just for a week or two weeks, but your life spoke joy. You had such an awareness of yourself. You felt connected, integrated, aligned with who you really are. Let your life speak. Make a mental note of that. And then the second way to describe how to find your purpose in life is to chase joy, to pursue joy. And that to me is the, the best one, the best way I can describe it. I'll tell you another story. When our son, he's now 12, and he was maybe six or seven years old, he got in a basketball league. It was his first basketball league uh, ever. He was, he was, that was his first team. And at that age, children, because obviously they're so young, they are filled with joy. I remember the coach telling them during practice that if they wanted to get the ball, they had to put their hand up in the middle of the game so that the guy with the ball would pass it to him to him and so i remember watching him during the game with my camera and i have this on tape seeing a huge smile on his face as he would run down the court past half court and he would lift his hand and sometimes he would get the ball sometimes he wouldn't get the ball and but what, that didn't matter. What mattered is that he was chasing his joy. He was living out of his joy. He couldn't help it. He simply was just connecting all these things in his heart and his mind. He wanted to shoot the ball. He loved basketball. And so he was putting his hand up with a smile on his face. And that is what pursuing joy is is about even as adults and even though we have hurts and pain and we have disappointments and we look back at people that hurt us that didn't pass us the ball you know going back to him he didn't always get the ball and that's what happens to us as we get older we have all these negative experiences of people and circumstances and even our own choices that quote steal our joy but don't give anyone the right to steal, their jo steal your joy. That would be the number one thing I want to tell you. Don't let anything in life, people, coaches, leaders, including your own voice, take away that simple joy. Now, let me tell you about obstacles usually that come to us when it comes to pursuing our joy. Like, let me give you a couple of things that I deal with all the time. Number one is finances. I, because we live in a, obviously a Western society that for the most part values material things. When I process life, I don't process it as what is the joy in my life. Instead, I process it as what is going to pay the bills. And so you end up, and I've done it, making decisions based on what can I do to pay my bills. Most of us would say there's nothing wrong with that. That is normal. That is good. You need to pay your bills for a season. But if you begin to develop that habit, it becomes a habit. Make sure that if you've done that in the past, that you don't do it over and over again. 
Find a way to pay your bills, even if it's half of your current income. This is what I call the overlap principle, and I can talk more about this at a different scope. The overlap principle means that if you're now at a place where you're tired of your life, you're tired of just doing what other people tell you to do, and you're realizing that the joy that is in you is, is way back there now. You can't even find it anymore. You need to consider the overlap principle, which means that you find a job that even if it's half of your current income, even if you have to move in with a friend or two or three and live more simply, it pays you half, but just enough to pay your bills. Make, do a simple budget, but it gives you the time to develop and most of all, get in touch with the joys in your life. That's the overlap principle. And so chasing your joy is without a doubt the way to find your purpose in life. So two things again in summary, let your life speak. What is my life saying? As I go through life, the ups and downs of life, the different seasons as a young adult, as a young parent, what is my life saying about myself? And it's such a different way to look at it, guys. It's not what do people say. It's not what do my leaders say. It's not what do my negative thoughts say. It's what does my life say. Let your life speak. So for me, my life since day one, probably since even before I was born, was saying, sing, heal, encourage, church, God, lead. And my guess is those five or six can even be distilled down to one or two things. Basically, God and people. So now, every, any time that I think, what, what should I do with my life? I go back to what my life has been saying for years. And then second, chase your joy. What's my joy? It's the same thing. Music. God, church, helping people. And that is my joy. And you know what? When we focus on our joy, abundance comes. Your bills will be paid. You will see other people affirm that. You will see people join your cause because they, <laughs> they see it so much clearer than we do. They see those things that we are wrestling with, that we battle with every day. They see it so easily. We never see it because of many reasons, mostly fear, shame, you know, insecurities, but other people see it. So when we are living out of our joy, other people join in. So some practical things, are people joining your cause? Do you have joy in the thing that you're pursuing? And then lastly, are the obstacles, financial obstacles or whatever other obstacle you may have, are they stealing away your joy, taking away your joy? And then fourthly is consider the overlap principle. Again, which means to maybe make less money, make half even, do the sacrifice, whatever sacrifice for two years so that you can then have the space in your life. I'm talking hours, like time like literally hours in the day to pursue the joy and let your life speak. What do you guys think? I hope that this is resonating with you guys as I drink my coffee. The, this is called the Gozo Scope of the Day. And I usually do this every morning, Monday through Friday, as I drink my coffee here. <laughs> Today is, I think... I forget what blend it is, but mm. I put some poison in it. This is poison. This is not nothing but poison. <laughs> it's good French vanilla poison, though. Thank you so much, Gosso family, for being here. I hope that you are enjoying these Gosso scopes. Give me some hearts, some love. Remember to share this scope with your friends. So what you do it is you simply uh, just swipe on the screen 
left to right, and you, sh you can share this scope with your friends. Even though we're small, but I am convinced that this scope will grow the more and more that we get together and that we interact about these very important issues. Mm, very good. Okay, guys, thanks so much for being here. We'll talk soon.